Hey, I'm Tanya Lacey and you're locked into SMB. things of you've got a single coming out, Greatness, which features mm -hmm. Kano. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the single, what it's about, how did you get Kano to feature? Um, well, the single is um, a positive track. It's about um, not having any regrets in your life and um, just, just believing that um, even when things are getting rough, that you're going to a better place and that you're, you're on the right path. And um, I wanted to work with Kano because he's someone that I've started working with when I first moved to London a few years ago and I always had a good rapport and chemistry with him in the studio and I respect what he does as an artist so um, I thought he'd be a great person to feature on my track. And you mentioned that you moved to London, can you tell us a bit about your, just a little bit though, like, obviously, yeah. bit like your upbringing, where you, you know, why you moved to London? Um, I'm from Bristol and um, I was in a band for about three years and then I left the band and was working with some local producers and I just felt like it was inevitable at some point I was going to have to move to London because this is where the industry is, you know, and so I, uh, I left my family and my job and everything and, and just headed to London and crashed at everyone's, everyone's house and slept in studios and just kind of um, sofa surfed and um, after a year I got my first record deal and yeah, I just never went back to never went back to Bristol. I just stayed in London. That's where it's at for me. Um, and you you co-wrote and featured on uh, Louis Essien's How We Roll. Yeah. Again, how did that come about? Um, you just that, one day and... that song uh, came out of a session that I had with another artist called El Marshall, um, and we wrote that song as a duet and. Uh, at the time I was signed to the same label as The Week and uh, he heard the song and was looking for a new single and it just worked out that he wanted the song and, and kept me on as a feature and it just it worked out really well. Yes, it came up to number two, didn't it, with Charts? Yes sir. Which is always good. Yeah. Um, and you also co-wrote Will I Am's T A G the yep. hardest ever. Again, that's a pretty big one. That was yeah. random because that was an idea that I started in Atlanta um, and I was, it was on the last day of my trip in Atlanta working with Dallas for my record and it was an idea that we came up with and we were just vibing in the studio and um, the label had heard it and they discarded it and I kind of didn't go back to work on it and thought nothing of it and then um, just under a, a year later Will I Am heard it and decided to work on it and it is what you hear now. So. And did you have any input after he sort of picked up on it or was it he picked up on it and thought yeah I'm going to use this? No, he got so. J-Lo on there, like <laughs> he should have kept me on. Um, so can you tell us a bit about your musical influences and you know what you listened to growing up? Um, I listened to a lot of um, Motown and people like Marvin Gaye, D.M. Warwick, Tracy Chapman. Michael Jackson, a lot of different styles of music from classical, my mum would listen to a lot of classical music and um, I used to play the violin in school so it was that side of music and it was also a fusion of, of reggae and raga um, which is representative of where I'm from, my Antiguan roots and also um, just general pop music like the Mamas and the Papas and, and uh, Michael and Janet Jackson and, it was just a mixture of lots of different types of music growing up. Yeah. And what was your first record like? Don't try and make My first yourself record. Like cooler than you actually were. Like, I think it was Mysterious <laughs> Girl, the first record that I actually... That's not too bad. Peter Andre. That's not too bad, that's good. Oh. Did you have good taste for me? <laughs> and, and what are your plans for the rest of the year? Um, an an I have out. an EP coming out called Head Chef. And uh, so Greatness is the first release from that EP and the second single is called Too Many Cooks which is a video that we shot recently in Antigua so I'm really excited to, to show people what we did out there, we had a lot of fun and um, we got creative and so it shows another side of my personality as well because so far people have only seen the more soulful 
songstress side of me and there's definitely more of a playful, feisty, in your face kind of character. So Too Many Cooks is definitely representing that side of me. Cool, we'll, we'll look forward to hearing that when it comes out. Cool. Um, and what, have you done any of the festivals so far this summer or, or are you doing any later on in the sort of festival circuit? Um, I'm, not, I'm gonna play it by ear. I mean, Greatness has just come out. So I did a few gigs um, a couple of weeks ago. I did Super Duper Fly, which is a hip hop night at the Jazz Cafe where I headlined, and that was amazing. Um, and I'm definitely going to be doing more gigs in the future. It's just all about creating more awareness of what I'm doing and just pushing my music out there and creating a demand. Have you got any nicknames that you had when you were younger? Yeah, that Egghead. Egghead. Um, <laughs> what else? <laughs> My dad calls me Power. Uh, why? Because I am Power. <laughs> I'm the Power. What else does he call me? <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Bitch Face. That's what my friends call me. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's it. Munchkin. Yeah, I've got quite a few. Depends on you know what day you catch me. <laughs> <laughs> but again, to most days. Again, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, can you tell us about a couple of your tattoos? I know you've got Antigua on your arm. Yeah, I got this done after um, after we shot too many cooks in Antigua. Um, that was the first video I had done, um, which I was completely in control creatively and orchestrated the whole trip and the whole photo shoot out there. And it was I had so many amazing touching moments while I was out there. Um, I came back and I just wanted to to something to represent and sort of signify that that time in my life when I was I was in charge again and I was doing what I loved and it everything started to make sense in Antigua. What about the other two you've got there? Um, this is an old ancient symbol, it's a tree of life. And uh, for me, it signifies the strength in unity. Um, all the branches are intertwined. So it's, um, yeah, strength in unity. It kind of reminds me of my family. Um, we're very close. And, um, and this is Sanskrit, which is one of the oldest um, scripts um, known to man, I think. And um, it means strength and determination. So this is my power hand. And, this, uh, I got this tattoo when I first signed my record deal. Um, it's the date I signed, and um, the flowers represent growth and um, keeping it fresh. Cool. Um, what's your favourite food? Oh, that's tough. I love food. Favourite food? Um, I'm going to say eggs because everyone knows me for eggs. <laughs> I was to be honest, I was expecting something a bit more adventurous. I know, well, I would say something adventurous, but for the sake of time, because we'll be here all day if I start going through everything that I love. But yeah, eggs, and I'll tell you why, because <laughs> I eat eggs every day. <laughs> every day, scrambled eggs, poached eggs, boiled eggs. <laughs> I've got to give my strength up. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, your, your favourite colour, is it more adventurous than...? Yes, my favourite colour is teal. No, my favourite colour is yellow. That's good, it's not white. It's bold, it's happy, it's in your face. And um, it's the colour of the sun. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, chocolates or sweets? Sweets. Uh, Coca-Cola or Pepsi? Coca-Cola. iPhone or Blackberry? iPhone. Fish or chips? KFC or Nando's? Nando's. <laughs> um, and our website is called We Are SME. What do you think SME stands for? Smelly midget eggs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you.